Hey, how's it going everybody? David Braga back with another YouTube video. Today we got a double upload. You saw the one earlier about Aaron Rodgers and Randall Cobb. And today we've got special guest Tom Manning. No, I'm just kidding. It's not actually Tom Manning. But it is Tom Manning's burner account on Twitter, TMB. How's it going today, man? Great. How are you doing? Doing fantastic. All right. So we got a couple things that we're going to discuss. Tom Manning, burner tmb and myself obviously both iowa state fans but we're also both packers fans so we're going to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that i've mentioned in the last couple videos but we're also going to talk a little bit about the olympics we'll get to that last um but first uh tmb i gotta get your thoughts here uh on texas and oklahoma saying that they're not going to renew their grants of media rights uh after 2025 what do you what do you think so we all know Texas pulled the same thing back in 2010, <clears throat> trying to uh, control the media with their TV rights. And back then, they had a little more reason. They were a little more relevant. I believe Mac Brown was still around then, or was the coach then. They were relevant. I believe so, um, yeah. It hadn't been that long ago that Vince Young had done what he did in USC. And this time around, you've gone through Charlie Strong, who was nothing short of really just bad. Yeah. Um, Tom Herman, they thought they started to show signs of improvement then. Um, and then you hear they have some culture problems. He pulls the locking Drew Lock against Missouri. He kind of gets that evil guy um, uh, label on top of Texas fans giving you no time to win. Right. Um, I just feel like with what they're doing right now, trying to control it even though i'll say this they think they're oklahoma in football but really they're playing more like the kansas um <laughs> right and when you when you have that big of a market you have no reason to play down to that level um, right so i just think what they're doing is is kind of screwing everyone else but i mean it is what it is we'll see how it works out right so like i guess my biggest thing is like they're not meeting expectations in the Big Twelve. What do they think? What do they think they're going to do in the SEC? Yeah, exactly. Because in the SEC, obviously, you got Saban and Bama. Yeah. And then you have another Kirby Smart is an elite recruiter. Oh, for um, sure, for sure, hundred percent. National championship and lost it. Probably should have won it, but Kirby um, Kirby Smart might be like the best recruiter in the country. Honestly, like yes, I agree, especially with. Um, they've had their shortcomings, obviously. Yeah. Uh, they got no playoff once, almost won it, and didn't, as I said. But they are, they've recruited elite. They just, I don't know if you saw, they picked up this running back who is just an <laughs> Dude is going to truck so many Longhorns. Yeah, exactly. And honestly, the SEC is better than the, it's definitely more top heavy than the Big 12. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Who's always good. Um, Mizzou was good when they joined, they fell off a little. LSU obviously had their run, weren't impressive last year, but they had their their run and did what they right. did. So I don't know what Texas sees besides money in the SEC where they're really going to benefit. Right, and it's not going to be on the field. And LSU, they they had a lot of opt outs, didn't they? They did. So they did. They had. So they had. I want to say a quarterback opted out in the middle of the year. Um, a five star tight end, Eric Gilbert. He's had some. It's been an interesting case. He was yeah. supposed to be amazing. He was good, then he opted out. Right. They had some injuries and all that, so it's just been kind of crazy for them. Well, and I guess I guess my biggest thing with, with them going to the SEC is, I mean, Oklahoma, you've been the dominant team in the Big 12 for 15 years, yeah. and and now you want to leave to go be the third best team? Fourth? Yeah, so I think Oklahoma now is accepting that. They are fighting for that second SEC spot that they know they can get into yeah. the playoffs. Right, um, and I guess I think I think do so. How long do we think this has been going on? Because I mean, I could understand it if they heard that the playoff was probably going to go to twelve, yeah. and then they went and did it. But I mean, I can't I can't imagine them doing it with a four team playoff. I agree. I completely agree. Because I mean, they, um, I mean Oklahoma Georgia. I mean, if that if that's ever a game, that's going to be the most important game, right? To figure out who's exactly. going to finish behind Bama, or who's going to. I guess exactly. who's. I guess who's going to lose to Bama in the in the SEC yep. title game, right? Yeah, and we saw a little uh, Oklahoma Georgia Rose Bowl a few years back. When right. Field and was there. And that, that was, was an extremely great game. That was the that was the overtime game, right? 
Or no. Yes, it was the early point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nope, they went to overtime, I believe. Yeah. Um, and Georgia ended up winning. Like, right. They lost to Alabama in the championship. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think this has been going that oh, they've been catching wind for a little bit here that the playoff is expanding. Right. Obviously, all this Twitter, you really don't know what's true, what's not true. I mean, we've heard about every everything you can possibly hear. Right. But the last thing I heard is this has been going on for at least six months. Jeez. Um, obviously, they know more than we do, but how long has this playoff discussion been picking up steam? Yeah. Go, well, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I would say probably, probably close to six months. Um, they seem very prepared. I will give it to them. Uh, they came in after media day. Yeah, said for sure. They said, said they were going to drop a statement right away, and they did it. So you yeah. got to think they've been building this up for a little bit. So I guess then – so obviously there's the aspect of they're just ditching eight teams. Yep. And I think everybody's in agreement that the Big 12 is not going to survive with eight teams. That's correct. So are we thinking that the other eight teams are going to disperse to other conferences? So there's obviously been talk Iowa State and Kansas to the Big 10. I think it was yep. TCU – Baylor and Texas Tech talked about the Pac-12, I think. Yep. Um, or do we think that the Big 12 is going to try to keep everybody and bring in like a Cincinnati or a BYU or a Houston? So I think the Big 12's only shot at bringing more teams in is pulling the four biggest, um, four, two, four or six biggest group of five markets that you can possibly bring in because Texas's revenue alone is going to be almost impossible to replace on right. top of the next best team, Oklahoma, in your conference. Right. And you're sitting there with Iowa State, who's the – I don't know if we're the next biggest market, but we're not far behind if we are, and we are not that big. No, no, for sure. Um, so I think Bob Bowlesby is really going to try to save it. Realistically, I don't see how a, how a Fox or a major news network or uh, channel decides that we are big enough. Right. Um, to uh, pay that much money to keep them on the air. Right. So I think, I think, I really hope, honestly, I've been on the, uh, I was saying Kansas to Big Ten for a while. Yeah. But you look and see, there's a few teams that might get screwed here. Um, I've heard Kansas State to the American. Yeah, no, I, so I was just going to ask you about that. So I think my prediction for, for when this came out was Iowa State, Kansas to the Big Ten, West Virginia to the ACC, and then the other four teams, Oklahoma State, TCU, Baylor, and Texas Tech to the Pac-12. That would give you that would give you three conferences with 16 and then the ACC with 15. Kansas does Kansas State go to the like do they go to the ACC? Would the ACC even take them? I don't think the ACC would take them. Who's the next? I'm trying to think the next closest team in the ACC. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I have I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, I can't, just, like Kansas State to the ACC would make it for sixteen team conferences. Yep. Yeah. But uh, if I'm the I, ACC. I almost look at a group of five right now. Would you take um, right now? Would you you'd take Cincinnati over Kansas State, right? I would. Just a hundred percent. Like yeah. Um, so I mean, I would. I would you would you take like a Memphis over Kansas State? That really, I mean, you look at Penny Hardaway is bringing Memphis up. You really, I'm not sure on academics there. Right. Um, I know it's not AAU. Right. So it's not like they have that upper hand, and that's really what it comes down to. Are you AAU or are you not? There's no gray area. Yeah, right. There. Um, I'm not, I don't think Memphis is, but I could be wrong on that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure but, about the academic side of it either. Yeah. I guess that's another option. Like, that's another, that's a whole other side of this that I'm not even looking at is is like a lot of conferences look at academics too uh to decide like any possible realignment issues yep and that's what the big 10 oklahoma state apparently went into the big 10 and they said they're only taking aau teams so that's why i was saying kansas are sitting pretty right now yeah compared to everyone else right so um yeah i would look at almost if i was acc taking a different team uh k-state does not bring in that much money right academic research wise or really football their basketball team had one good year and they lost in the first round yeah under Weber. um so it really just depends what they look at doing it it does suck for k-state they had that great run with snyder yeah obviously for a while but um uh being a market pays and they had time to get their academics cleaned up because when this happened back in 2010 could have prepared themselves for the 
second time coming and they didn't so um sucks for them i wish them the best but you did this to yourself almost so so i guess quick quick little follow-up to that uh so we, we talked about the big 12 having to get all of the big uh group of five markets is there any yep. chance now that Texas is gone that Missouri and Nebraska and A and M look at coming back? I think there's. I would love for that to happen. Honestly, right? I, see right? Bitch, I actually think Cyclone Larry, uh, shout out to him, put something out about this. Trade Texas A and M for Texas, bring back Nebraska, Colorado, Missouri. And you got yourself a pretty damn good conference. I um, for sure. I think the market money is just too big in the SEC. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's that's the big that's the big thing holding this back, right? Is are Mizzou yeah. and Texas A and M willing to give up extra money to continue yeah. to avoid Texas and Oklahoma? Exactly, and you it's really just where they think their program. I love Eli Drinkwitz at Missouri. I think he's yeah. great. He's been an elite recruiter. For sure. Is he there to stay? I don't know. And can Mizzou replicate enough football success to make up for the market money? And I really don't think so. When right. you're bringing back, when you have Iowa State right now, top ten, and M's top ten, um, obviously Nebraska is not there. Uh, oh Dark yeah. Horse <laughs> me, this is a little off topic, but Dark Horse for me this year, TCU will finish third in the Big Twelve. Ooh. Um. Gary Patterson, man. <laughs> Gary Patterson, dude is. Gary Patterson, man. Dude's a stud, right? Like. He is and um. They've had some down years, but Zach Evans is a monster in the backfield. I think this is the year Max Duggan really tapes out. I was forward. I was gonna say Max Duggan. I yeah. I don't know if I ever shared this. I got an email from a TCU fan at some point, uh, and he was like, "Yeah, TCU will never go anywhere because they got a kid from Des Moines playing quarterback." I, <laughs> I think I think they sent me that because they knew I was from Iowa. And they knew like I was an yep. Iowa State fan. They sent me an email. They were like, "Yeah, Max, Max Duggan's trash because he's from Des Moines," and now he's I man. I'm telling you. I like that. I like that sneaky pick. That's a that's a good one. Yeah, I do. I just think that they're – so I think the last year that they were, like, really on top of their game, if I remember right, was that they were down 31 nothing to Oregon at halftime. And yeah, came back yep, to one. yep. I believe that's the year before kind of this 5-7, and 4-8 and eight stuff started taking place. Right. You saw Gary Patterson walk coach you. He didn't lose to Texas when Herman was there. Yeah. He went through well. Yep. Um. We had our struggles last year with them. Obviously, second game of the year. Yeah. Do I remember the? No, let's no, let's, let's no, 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 no. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. Um, but Bruce, <laughs> Bruce Hall and Kene Nwangu, uh led us to victory. But man, I am scared of TCU, especially. Yeah. Um, obviously, sorry, going more off topic here. You bring in Oklahoma second to last game of the year, potentially undefeated, top ten, top five matchup. Um, say you win that game, you're going into TCU looking to play Oklahoma again the next week. That is not a situation I want to no. be in. No, I will say, I will say, I would kind of prefer TCU to be good, just because oh, then yeah. that's not a trap game. We're yep, not, we're I not agree. looking past TCU to go play Oklahoma again. Yep, we're ready for TCU if they're good. So I'm, I'm with you on TCU third. Yeah, I don't, I don't um, know that it'll happen, but I'd, I'd be stoked if it was. Yeah. And I'm a little more scared of if TCU – like, Gary Patterson isn't a coach. His teams are going to fight till the season's over. Oh, for sure. Um, they're, they're not going to – oh, we're out of contention. Or we're going to fall over and lay down and give up. If we go in there not prepared, we can lose. Yeah, um, for sure. We're just well-coached enough. I think we do have more talent in them. But they're well-coached enough. You look at his, where Iowa State was a few years ago. Um, Campbell's first year, we come in and beat Texas Tech sixty-six to ten. Almost last game of the year. Not saying yeah. that happened to us, but team's right. not ready. With their well coach, they they will beat you. And that was a that was a Texas Tech team that needed that game to go to a bowl game. Yes, I believe you're right. Yeah, I believe and they were five and six, and then we beat them yep. to make them five and seven. And so homes got hurt early. Yeah, made him look like I mean, I yeah. Mean, whatever you want he did not look like patrick mahomes no so um that's just the power of great coaching and being overlooking teams oh for sure so i think he knows that 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 we can't be that team. right, <laughs> right. so to con so to conclude this little section we got oklahoma and texas going to the big uh or going to the sec excuse me uh at the latest 2025 i think we're all in agreement this is going to happen sooner than then 
Yep. Um, One last little thing. If I am a Big 12 team and I'm offered a spot in a different conference, do not wait. Do not wait at all. Not immediately. If, if, if one of those conferences comes a call and you're answering and you're leaving as soon as you can. Exactly. I, and if Oklahoma and Texas are screwed for a few years, good. Yeah. <laughs> Give it right back to them. Well, horns, horns down, fuck Boomer. Yes. All right. Exactly. <laughs> Moving on to our uh, – Moving on to our second topic, Aaron Rodgers is back, man. Aaron Rodgers is back. What do you think? You know, me and you have talked about this for a while. Adam Schefter tried to blow smoke. Everyone, oh, my God. Everyone tried to blow smoke. And, I mean, we might have been homers a little bit, but we knew Rodgers, there's too much money there, man. He's a rich man, but no one turns down $30 million. No one turns down $30 million and the Packers aren't going to trade him. So his exactly. options are retire or play. So Exactly. I mean, and he pays back the signing bonus if he doesn't play. We we're not trading him. Yeah. I'm just gonna say I think me and you can agree here. We're happy it's over. We knew this was coming. Yeah. I was not. I was not scared. Um, right. Is this the last dance? I don't. As if you haven't seen, Adams and Rogers both posted a picture of uh, Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, kind of the last dance yeah. thing on Instagrams. I think so. I think Jordan Love is our starting quarterback by next year. Really, oh, I'm gonna enjoy, I'm gonna draw the hell out of this season if, I, if this is it. Man, it's it's one of those things though. I don't want it to be the last dance, but you're right. It does it does really feel like it. I will say, shortly after they posted that, I think it was uh, Tunyon posted a picture of Dennis Rodman. Yes, and then Aaron yeah. Jones posted a picture of that coach that's doing the shrug. Yep, yep. So. Is there any chance that the Packers players are just trolling everybody this offseason? There is. I think there's a great chance of that. Um, you've seen David Bakhtiari kind of sending out some tweets, joking around. Oh, um, for sure. Around with, oh, Aaron Rodgers didn't tell me he was coming back. Who there, knows there, was that, there was that whole a source close to Aaron Rodgers, and everyone was asking if it was Bakhtiari. And yep. he's like, oh, I mean, yep. I'm not going to confirm it yet because it's not, you know, like. Yeah. So, um, but obviously everyone was just looking for something. No one likes winners, um, right? No one likes consistent winners. Brady and the Patriots, Bama and Saban, whatever you want to call it. LeBron James and, and his runs. No one likes winners. Aaron Rodgers is a winner. The Packers are winners. Um, they're going to do whatever they can to distract yeah. you from the fact that we win. I have a I have a friend that's a not to like just throw smoke at all of the Vikings fans, but I have a friend that's a Vikings fan. He is very sad this morning. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and you see, see, here's the thing: Packers fans cheer for championships. Yeah. Lions, Bears, and Vikings fans, that season's goal are to beat the Packers. Yeah. And that's where we win in the NFC North. Right. I I saw a tweet. I think it was I think it was this morning after after everyone kind of saw that Rodgers was back. I think it was. It was something. It was very similar to those lines. It was like, oh yeah, you know, like man, if I would, I would hate my life too if I had to cheer for an opposing team to lose. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so, I love that Rodgers is back. I do think this is his final year. I think. I don't know if you saw a tweet. Um, they had to get some stuff worked out with the GM and president. Yeah. Um, about that was not money involved. Rodgers wanted things to change that weren't yeah. about money. Yep. But I do think bringing Cobb back might have been one of those things. Perfect segue. How how much is uh, so? Assuming all of this Randall Cobb to Green Bay stuff is true, we've seen uh, Brandon Cooks tweeted about it. Uh, he said like Cobb go back home, set it off. Uh, yep. Pulling up the tweet here, Tom Pelissero said that the Packers are working on a trade uh, with the Texans to bring Cobb back. How much of that does play into Aaron Rodgers? Like, it, had they conversed with him before today or before the last week or so? About hey, if we bring back Cobb, are you are you going to stop all this? Are we going to stop all this? How how much does that play into it? I think that they after so you got to think they realized. I mean, we screwed ourselves here. I went to Aaron Rodgers and said, "What do we need to do to get you back here for at least one more year?" Love isn't ready. You know that. I know that. No one's going to be in denial about right. that. One more year, it might be time, but. Rodgers is a genius, and he knew he had all the chips, and he re he let this thing ride as long as possible, literally. Right. Um, until training camp reported. So I think he knew he was going to get what he wanted, and that did, did play a big part in 
um, they didn't call. I mean, you might have been able to call his bluff and get him back, but they didn't want to take that chance on things like trading for or, right. Um, um, who knows other things are happening in the clubhouse? There's rumors he doesn't like. Um, and Goody, how do you pronounce his last name? <laughs> Goody. And, yeah. <laughs> There's rumors that they don't get along. Um, and now, obviously, with Adam's contract stuff coming out, right? You don't know how solid of a position he's in, right? I think there were a lot of factors that played into the Packers did what Rodgers wanted, and he came back. So that's really all that matters. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I wonder, I wonder how much uh, communicating now Rodgers and Adams are doing about their both their both their contracts, right? You got to think. I'm the if I'm Devontae Adams, I'm the best receiver in football. Do I want to play for a first year starter? Right. Um, when Rodgers have that great connection, obviously he has elite playmaking, um, ball placement ability, accuracy, arm strength, everything you want. Um, been a, this is his 17th year in Green Bay, I believe, coming in. I, yeah, I passed, believe. Uh, yeah, I think he he broke the 16 year curse, right? That was the yep. whole thing. Yep. Um. So you really got to consider. Uh, is Jordan Love close enough to Aaron Rodgers where it doesn't hurt me? And if I was Devont- Devontae Adams, honestly, I would say no. I want right. him around forever, but uh, if Rodgers, if this is his last year, I'm looking elsewhere. So I guess the th- the, the biggest thing that like kind of you know pulls my leg back a little bit is there was everything the previous offseason was about how LaFleur came in and he took over and Rodgers just hated him. Now, yep. I don't know what happens behind the scenes. I don't have inside eyes and ears. But those two look like the best of friends every time I see them. And all the media pushed was, oh, how much they hate each other. Oh, how, how right. they don't get along in the offseason. Or how they don't get along during practices. And then they yep. come out and they look like best of friends. And that, like, that could just be a show for cameras. Again, I have no idea. You know. Um, yeah. But then all the media comes out and they're like, oh, Rogers is done. Rogers is gone. You know, there's no chance. Adams has now stopped, you know, contract talks and everything. How much of that, like, I'm a journalism major. I know what gets clicks. How much of this is just nonsense to get clicks? That's that's <laughs> what gotta, I want to know. <laughs> you you got to think that. So Rogers' first year under the floor uh, didn't have the stats. Um, yeah, for sure. 28 touchdowns, something like that. He comes out and throws 48 this year. Um, I can see him being a little frustrated. Uh Obviously, it did come out. He did not like McCarthy at the end, and I couldn't. Oh him yeah, up. yeah. I, saw him that one, that one. They didn't try to hide it for the cameras no. as much. No, they did not. <laughs> um, I think that Rogers is um, pretty stubborn guy. You can kind oh, of for sure. once or twice. For it sure. Might have taken him a little bit to warm up to the floor, but you see them on the field, and that that's not for show. He's does he's not thinking about the cameras. I mean, they're out there hugging each other, winking your guns all I, that stuff i love that clip i think it was at the end of the raiders game he had the perfect passer rating or the perfect yeah the perfect passer rating oh. and they gave him the game ball the flirt like holds up the ball and goes and the old man even ran for one oh, and they're all yep. they're all smiling and laughing and patting everybody on the back like i don't like you're right i don't think that is for cameras i think they do oh. genuinely like each other at this point so then i guess i guess to to both rogers and adams like i don't know how much contract work can be done or needs to be done or will be done but you know there is a part of me that starts to question when are some of the packers players gonna maybe take a little bit of a pay hit to try to keep this team together because i mean you can only go to so many nfc championship games in a row before you either break through or you don't get there anymore right correct and honestly this is like Almost like the Bills a long time ago. What they right. made three straight and uh, Super Bowls with Kelly and never break through. I'll say this: you look at the Chiefs, you look at the Bucks, who happened to both make the Super Bowl last year, and right. uh, that lost one at the year before. Those guys are willingly social media interviews, whatever it is, openly taking pay cuts to keep the team together. Brady's um, Brady's one of the biggest like takes a pay cut every year. Yeah, I mean he's he he's like have... he's like the fifteenth highest paid quarterback or something. Yeah, I mean that's that's one of the goats. <laughs> like yeah, exactly. Um, and you hear I believe Chris got or Mike Evans said he'd take a pay cut to get Godwin back. Right. Um, you hear stuff like that all the time. I'm not saying this Packers team has 
uh, a canter in the locker room or anything, but you don't see guys coming out saying things like that for each other. No. Maybe the guys just want their bag. I mean, you can't I, really no, I no, I can't blame him for doing that. No, I mean, that's just the, the the fan part of me wants him to be like, hey, yeah, I'll take a 75%, you know, I'll, instead of taking 10 mil, I'll take seven and a half mil. Yep. Right? Yep, exactly. Just to keep two and a half mil for somebody else to try to keep the team together. But, you know, I guess it, it is a business. Like, it is. It, what's going to happen is going to happen. I'm a fan. I can't really change that. Yep. Um, I'm not in their locker. Like I said, I'm not in their locker room. I'm not. I'm not in their minds. I don't know what they're thinking. Uh, at all points of time but you know the the fan part of me really does start to wonder when when and if somebody is going to be like hey yeah i'll take two and a half mil less a year i'll take three mil less a year just because i mean like i said you can only go to so many in a row you're either gonna break through you're either gonna break through or you're not gonna get there anymore yep and then you you're i mean we have signed so we start out with uh, Kenny Clark last last in the last off season, I believe, or beginning of last year, um, whatever it was, right. get the deal done, get Bakhtiari done, um, he gets hurt. You get Jones done in the off season, which not many people saw coming. No, I didn't even see that coming. I uh, I thought Aaron um, Jones was more gone than anybody else was. I completely agree. Some reason you bring Kevin King back, and I will never. <laughs> uh, I knew we were. I we were gonna get to that eventually. Yep. I, <laughs> I've I have liked Kevin King since the draft day, but damn it, he makes it so hard to defend him week in and week out. He does. I want him to be you. so good, and I think he can be so good. But then he just biffs one yes. out of four plays, yep. and it it costs you seven points at the end of a half in an NFC Championship game. I don't know what's uh, going yeah. on. Which could have honestly won us the game if you look back. That they don't score that touchdown. Uh, a lot of shit changes. Oh, for sure. Hundred percent, thousand percent. My biggest thing with, uh, especially secondary guys, is just be smart. Yeah. Um, you might not make the play, but just don't do stupid shit. And watching <laughs> Iowa State since I was a little kid, you see a lot of stupid shit. Oh, for sure. Um, not anymore. But thank God. <laughs> just, just be, yeah, thank God, secondary's cleaned up a little. Um, if you don't make the play, that's fine, but dragging on guys or doing whatever you do just make smart decisions because it's going to get caught especially when you're playing against tom brady in the nfc championship <laughs> with the game on the line yeah um, use your head it's just stuff like that like if you get beat you get beat y'all be mad but pass interference is not where you go with that right um give your team a chance so nope. it's just that's really makes me mad about kevin king is <laughs> he's just not a smart player um and I think I don't know. If, can you teach football IQ? And after five years in the NFL, not really. I know. Um, I don't. Can, I don't think so. No, you can hope he starts to correct some small mistakes. But Jair Alexander is one hell of a smart player. Yeah. Oh. Um, and you, he just has it. Top notch. Yeah. I mean the the um, dude has the dude has three thousand IQ. He does. Like. Um, that clip of him blowing up the Viking screen, oh, knowing God. it's coming before it happens. Love it. That's just not something you're going to see Kevin King do. No. I was asking him to do that, but there's a pretty big difference between that and being just completely stupid. So, Right. So we got to hope. You got to hope Eric Stokes can step up some this year. Right. Um, we're going to start out going at Kevin King, but that yeah. is what it is. So we, we kind of talked about this a little bit before I started recording then. Is, is Kevin King in this deal to get Randall Cobb? Or is it? I mean, because like we have to, we have to make calori- salary space. Well, I didn't even think about that. We got to dump some cap. Yeah. Um, I don't think they bring him back with the intention to trade him on a one-year deal. I think they bring him back knowing they need. They need. They know Eric Stokes probably isn't week one ready. Okay. Um, at least starting wise. Right. Um, you, the Vikings have some pretty damn good receiving receivers this year i don't know i believe they just signed dd <laughs> they did just sign dd westbrook god yes. I, the vikings gotta stop signing players i like because this is <laughs> everyone um, talks about the bears good. by the way everyone talks about the bears who who gave the vikings this free pass all of a sudden yeah um, <laughs> everyone talks about oh rogers is gone and the and the bears just got justin fields like it's the bears division uh hello yeah. Have you seen what's going on in Minneapolis? <laughs> yeah, I know. The Vikings got a pretty damn good roster. You got uh, Anthony Barr back. 
they got they got uh, uh, Daniel Hunter. Uh, was, was it Hunter that missed last year because he had the? Uh... He had a neck injury. Yeah, and I heard he was mad at his contract. Yeah, so, so they got, they get Daniel Hunter back, involved. and they still got. Um, I mean, their corners are their corners are pretty sketchy, right? They are. They are. But, They're young. Right, and you've got you got Harrison Smith on the back end. You got pass rushers out the anus. You got, you got Eric Kendricks. You got Eric right? Kendricks in the middle. Sorry, uh, what's that? I believe they just signed Sheldon Richardson. They just right? they, they did just get uh, Sheldon Richardson. And then on the yeah. offensive side, you got Dalvin Cook in the backfield, yeah. and then you he got absolutely destroys the Packers. Every oh, a hundred, yeah, a thousand percent. And then on the outside, you got Thielen and uh, Jefferson. And then you yep. just signed D.D. Westbrook. Westbrook? Yep. That's a really good wide receiver three. <laughs> it is. Um, I, I think – I'll say this. I'll say when we beat them this year. Um, there you go. We are going to – I am not a Zimmer fan. I am not a Zimmer supporter. <laughs> um, his coaching is just – he makes some decision. I'm just like, what? He's just very stubborn. He doesn't want to change his ways. He doesn't adapt. Yeah. Um. I think that has hurt the Vikings. They've never won a Super Bowl. Um, right. Not all his fault, but he's had some pretty damn good rosters, and they don't have much to show for it. So at some point, you got to stop pointing fingers at the players and really see where did it come from. Yeah. Hey, I just got some got some news here from uh, Pro Football Talk, everyone's favorite Vikings fan. Uh, Alan Lazard just signed his exclusive rights free agency tender with the uh, with the Packers. Oh, nice. Awesome. So, uh, my guy, I got his jersey hanging up behind me. I gotta, gotta rep the boys, you know. Awesome. So that's that's just some more great news for Green Bay today, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, and you gotta think. Um, I'm not exactly sure how that all works, but Lazard, um, I didn't know what was happening, and he might have been waiting to see. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's uh, that's how you got to think. Like the rest of the receivers were thinking that too, right? Like Devin Funch just opted out last year. Like what? He's he's probably hella confused. Yeah. You, you got Lazard, who Rogers is really good friends with, yep, and yep. he's like, oh shit, the guy that's been the guy that's been kissing me up, Rogers, and my number one receiver both don't know what the hell's going on either. Yep. Where am I at? And exactly. uh, we got. Uh, EQ and MVS are just sitting there like, yeah, we didn't really have great seasons last year, but like, what are we supposed to do? So yeah. I don't know. I just, I just want the season to start. <laughs> just put, put quick. all this behind us, move on to the season. Let's get into it. Yep. And I think MVS is a guy who just needs to get out of his own head. Oh, a hundred percent. Those deep ball. I mean, that dude has elite speed. Yeah. He just needs to get his own head and he'll be great. You know what I would do? If I'm MVS, I'm de- I'm deleting Twitter and never opening it again. Yes, I completely agree. Like I like the the dude puts out like he, he puts out tweets here and there about like when he's gaming and stuff like that and he always like he's you yeah. know, he's a, he's a, he's a pretty active social media guy. And I'm not saying that that fans are getting to him, but and I'm not saying like social media is necessarily always a bad thing. But I would just put it down for a season, yep. see how it goes, you know, try something different. Because, like you said, he's just gotta he's just gotta open himself up a little bit, you know. Keep that keep I that totally bubble, agree. you know. Focus on you, you know. Like you said, elite speed. I mean, the dude the dude yep. beats anybody. Yep. And it, you know, just once he gets those hands on the football, just hold on to it. Yep. And you got a, the Colts game last year when he finally. Oh God. Um, yep. Went to, went, I'm pretty sure he went to tw- Twitter straight after, pretty soon after. He just got to stay off. Yeah, I mean, and and he he kept us in the game too. With uh, yeah. I think he or I I'm not sure if it was that game or if it was one of the later games, but like you know, like one of the whole big things on social media is MVS giveth and MVS taketh away, and yeah. and that was just one of those times, you know, where he, he gives you he gives you that that deep. Uh, seam route against Chicago where he just runs by everyone because the Bears left a linebacker on him for some reason. Yep. And he yep. just toasts yep. everybody for a 60-yard bomb. And then he yep. has those games where he catches a quick out and he fumbles the football. So, yep. I don't know. He's I, – I do I do love the guy. And I – I do too. I'm, I'm – like, like I am with Kevin King, I'm very much higher on MVS than a lot of other people. But yep. I totally agree with you. He's just He's just got to get out of his own head. 
All right. So that was a lot yeah. of time. Uh, a lot of time on the Packers. So let's let's talk about Simone Biles here, because I I think this might be the one thing that we maybe disagree on. So let's let's see. I know you just got introduced to this just before we started. Um, yeah. So Simone Biles, for those that don't know, I'm sure everybody does, but for those that don't know, uh, the U.S. is competing in the Summer Olympics in uh, shit. Where are they at? Uh, Tokyo. Tokyo. That's right. And in the women's gymnastics team final on the, like the final, like the last day, the last like couple or the last like round or whatever, uh, Simone Biles opted out and didn't perform. I'm not sure. I assume she, I didn't see it cause it was at like four in the morning or something here. Um, I assume she just didn't perform at all. Uh, but I don't actually That's have confirmation. That's kind of what it sounded yeah. like. Um, and they originally said it was because of a medical issue, so everyone was like, "Uh oh, like did she like did she get like hurt on one of the uh, attempts yesterday or one of the runs yesterday or something?" And then it came out later. Uh, I think it was afterwards. She had a press conference, and she said that no, it wasn't anything. It was mental health. Like she just wasn't in the right state of mind to perform. And I got I got to be honest, man. I I get that there's so much pressure. In the Olympics, especially when you're Simone Biles, you're quite possibly the greatest gymnast of all time. Oh, and hell, she's been the most dominant athlete we've seen. Yeah, we but if you're gonna, right if you're gonna put, I think she had like on the back of her like shirt, on the back of her like Olympic shirt, she had like a, a the like a goat logo, like oh. etched into her jacket. If you're gonna have that, man, you can, can you really clean. let mental illness like I. Man, this is such a this is such a touchy subject because yeah, everyone's gonna so everyone's gonna blast me because it's yeah. mental health and like I I have people like I know people that suffer from this and mental health is not a joke at all no, at all. But if you're gonna go around and flaunt the goat, which she is, yep. you can't be saying that you're not in the right mindset to yep. perform at the Olympics. I agree with that. Um, at first. Uh, when you introduced this to me before I didn't look very much, I was like, yeah, um, if something's wrong, something's wrong. Yeah, so for sure. Really that doing a little more. Um, I'm and I, I will say, I will say, not, I will say uh, just real quick. She, she was there. She was still like on the sideline. She was still cheering on her teammates, which I applaud. Absolutely. Yep. Be there. Absolutely. Cheer on your team. Absolutely. Rep represent the country uh, because you've been so dominant and everything. Um, but man, I just, I hope I hope everything's okay. Honestly and truly, I do hope everything's okay. But I like I I just that's one you gotta you gotta stick it out, man. Yeah. Um. And going with that, kind of off your point, uh, she was there on the sideline. She was going had the press conference after. Um. You looked at her energy. She seemed fine. Right. I mean, she that's was so bad. Where she didn't compete. Why was she still there? Right. I yeah. I guess that is a. I guess that is a good point. I don't know. I mean, it. It's it's uh. It was that what? Uh, who was it? The Robin Williams quote, where it's like the most depressed people always show their happiness, and they're always trying to help other people. Yeah. So like, I I I do really, I really hope that she's taking care of herself, right? I do too. But if I, she needs to take time off, that's fine. I I a hundred percent agree. If but if don't. you if you need to take care of yourself, do it. Yes. Like uh, mental health is not a joke at all absolutely not it's not something that people should just be you know joking around about like i mean i play video games i know how toxic people can get but like i man it just i i feel like if you're if you're there you need to compete right i feel like that's Um, you know like i don't know i agree with you again not a joke at all can't be taken lightly but um she's done this for pretty much her whole life oh for sure She's been to the Olympics before. The and she's counting on her. She's to she's been in this position before. Like yeah. I mean, she's she's been to the Olympics countless times. She's won countless medals. I mean, I I I hope that there's nothing like behind the scenes because there there was that whole uh the the like gymnastics coach or the gymnastics yeah. trainer, right? Uh, Larry, uh, Larry Nasser. Yeah, yeah. There was all that, and you know that was a that was a massive deal, and I'm glad that that. Yeah shit bag is out of there um but man i really hope that there's nothing else behind the scenes 
going on I again. I completely agree. And I really yeah. hope that I hope that everything gets sorted because obviously your mental health is more important than a gold medal. Yep, With without a doubt. Hundred percent. But I, um, you know, I think you've changed my mind on that. I think going back, like, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't have been there if I wasn't good enough to compete. Yeah. I don't, I don't feel like you should. I do like that she was there supporting everybody, but at the same time, I mean, like, if you're gonna be there and you're not like broken ankle in a cast or something, yep. I mean, I I'm probably gonna get blasted for this, but I mean, that's that's just what I think. I, I agree go ahead, you. go I mean, ahead, sue me. I mean, that's yep. it's different, and I've been an active LeBron James. Um, I don't want to say hater, just not the biggest <laughs> fan. But can you imagine LeBron James going into? You can call this the game seven. Um, yeah, for sure. Quarter. The Olympics and the team event, absolutely. Yep. High game, and him opting out of the quarter because something's wrong. That's not. I just don't see that happening. Um, and I could you imagine like, how much shit he would get for that? I will say we still don't know like everything. So like, yes. if there was like, for whatever reason, if there was like a death in the family or something, or if yep. there was something that was completely wrong, like at the, then at that point, like yeah, okay. I yeah. Mm, yeah I get it <laughs> like definitely like you know yeah, um, I understand that but, but yeah time, I I, you I do think you'd be on the first flight back to the states if that yeah was the case. yeah if it was something that serious like you don't be there <laughs> like yeah. go go take care of you <laughs> and yeah she uh, she tweeted she tweeted a little bit ago it was just a white heart and you know I yep. I don't know what it means other than it was just a white heart you know there's probably nothing else to it but. You know, I, I do hope that everything's okay with her. And, and you know, obviously I hope uh, – uh, we did end up getting silver in the team anyway. Uh, nope. The the Russian Olympic Committee, I don't even know, ROC, I think that's the Russian, like, team because they're banned. So, like, they can't oh, actually yeah. be under the Russian name, but it's the Russian team or whatever. They ended up getting gold. Um, but, yeah, like, Simone Biles has always just been just a tremendous representative. Yes. So, yep. so yep. I, I do hope, you know, her and, and, uh, Katie Ledecky, uh, the swimmer and, you know, people like Michael Phelps, you know, they've always just been, just been tremendous, tremendous representatives. And I hope, uh, I hope every, everything's all right. Um, I, agree with you. Yeah, I feel like, you know, sort of to just wrap that up, you know, if you're there compete and if something is seriously wrong, you know, take care of yourself, take a step back, oh. you know, yep. um, mental health, obviously again, not a joke. Um, not nothing to be Most trifled important. with at all. Um, yeah. Just being it's it. Also, uh, that's something you don't want to have one foot in the door with either. No, which goes absolutely not. Being there, or not being there. Right. So, so um, maybe she made the wrong decision in going, but she'll get it figured out. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we believe in Simone and I think, I think she still has the individual stuff. So, you know, we'll kind of see how this story progresses again. This is a very new story. It was just, just today. Um, you know, we still don't have like everything going on. You know, we don't we don't know the whole story at all yet. I don't think. Um, yeah. Yeah. So she's. Don't blast us if something else comes out. Yeah, we, I I will be sure to make a video if something else comes out and just like yeah. delete the last fifteen minutes. But. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so just so, just sort of wrap it wrap it up here. We've been going oh, forty five minutes almost. Uh, TMB, wow. it was great to have you on. We talked Oklahoma and Texas to the SEC and what that means for all the big 12 teams. We talked about Rogers coming back and the possibility of us trading for Randall Cobb of the Houston Texans to bring him back. And obviously we wish uh, the best of Simone Biles and all of the, all of the athletes uh, as a matter of fact, from, from the USA, from Japan, uh, China, Australia, Sweden, everywhere um, taking care of your mental health and all of our viewers, obviously taking care of your mental health, um, making sure everybody's staying safe. It's been a rough year for everybody. Uh, I think, you know, yeah, with, uh, with COVID and hopefully not to, you know, make this a COVID video, but hopefully, you know, everything, everything gets back to normal here sooner rather than later. Yeah. We've already seen, see already Jack seen, Trice uh, completely packed out. yeah, we want to see Jack Trice full. We want to see Lambo full. We want to see Wrigley full. We want to see it all yeah. full. Get everybody back to normal. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. TMB. I appreciate you coming on. We'll have to have you on in the future at some point yeah, uh for having me on. Love talking. you got any final words for our six viewers i because <laughs> i'm sure down, only six people boomer. what was that <laughs> arms down fuck boomer sorry what one more time arms down 
Fuck Boomer. Yeah, I just wanted to hear you say it a couple times. Yeah. Make it all clear. right. Hey, thanks for joining us, man. I hope to see you guys all on the next episode. This will be going up either today or tomorrow, depending on my upload speed. Uh, but yeah, that'll do it. Make sure you like the video if you did. Join our conversation down below in the comments. Click that bell notification to get a little notification whenever I go live and whenever I upload a video. And I assure you, there will be plenty of live streams this fall for all of the Packers and Cyclones games that I don't end up going to. So we'll see. I will see you guys next time. Peace out.